Hey, Scott, what, what kind of camp is, is Cam Little had? How close is he to winning that job? Yeah, he's done a really good job. I think that the big thing for him is he came in this spring, so it kind of helped him get a, a leg up a little bit. You know, a lot of your freshmen don't make it here in the summer, so it's good getting him in the spring. Because this spring, he, he really struggled, but when he got here in the spring, he was field goal, kickoff, and punting, trying to figure out what his, all he could do for us. And he really tried to slow back that up back part of spring has let him focus on field goals and kickoffs and <clears throat> he's had a really good camp so far. I've been real pleased with him. What is the like about him? He's making his field goals <laughs> more than anything. He's getting great height on the ball. He's got good operation. His, uh, his kickoff ability has gotten better. You know, that's another area that I knew coming in, that was kind of a, I mean, he can, he can place the ball correctly, but we need guys that can put in the end zone and out of the end zone who want to do that. And that's something he's getting better at. That makes sense. In terms of field goal kicker, I mean, he's he's making his field goals and we're moving it around on him. He's doing a really good job of that, and he's he's worked hard and got a positive attitude. So, real, real pleased with that. Hey Scott, we've heard about Greg Brooks maybe possibly being punt return, but who else is in the mix? And can you talk yeah. about kick returners as well? Yeah, you know, punt, punt return for us. I, I've I've come from a background as a special teams guy. That I've always really tried to find a really good player to do that. I think it's a game changer. And I think it's the one thing in special teams, we talk a lot about the 11 guys in the room that as an as effort. And I feel like punt returns is always effort up front. And I feel like we're getting that from our guys. We just got to have the right guy on the back end. So, you know, we got Greg working back there. We've got uh, Nate Perotti working back there who, who played quite a bit last year. Uh, Bryce Stevens has done a good job for us, a freshman. <clears throat> And uh, the Lowry kids have been out there a little bit as well. You mentioned Greg Brooks. And Greg, Greg come to me this summer and said, Coach, you know, you know, two things I didn't know about him. He said, you know, my dad played in the NFL. That was kind of, kind of interesting. And he said, Coach, I want to play even more special teams for you. And, I, and a lot of kids are not that, always that way, you know. He said, Coach, I said, well, how many players are you playing in a game? He said, about 70. He said, well, Coach, I play on all four units. So that really, that's kind of. That's the kind of attitude our football team has had, which is really good. Now, we're not going to play them on four units. We can't. I told him that. But he also enlightened me. He said, you know, Coach, I can, I can catch a ball. I'm going to turn punts. So we started working this summer, and that's, that's been, been been a good pickup for us. we got to find that can do that. Well, I don't know if he had to make any moves on his 69-yard interception return. <laughs> but what have you yeah. seen in terms of, like, why he's a dynamic punter? Yeah, well, and, and I didn't use the word dynamic right, but what I would tell you is this. He can feel the ball, and that's the most important thing. But for me, and I've worked under head coaches that want somebody, A, that can feel the ball, and that is the most important thing. But I've also felt like your best punt returners are guys that are a little bit dangerous about that. You know, they, they feel the ball well, but they might not feel it as well as the other guy, but they're going to be a difference maker when they touch the football. And that's what we're trying to find at that position. And I, boy, I, and I can't remember the guy's name that played here that had an unbelievable run against Tennessee. Joe Allen, and I've showed that to our team. <clears throat> and we, we want to get back to that. It's been a long time since the University of Arkansas has had a punt return for a touchdown. And we talk about that, and we want that to happen, and hopefully that will happen this year for us. Kick returners you mentioned, right? At kick returners, we've really uh, – you know, you have Davion Warren, you know, that's coming off an injury, but – so it really gave us an opportunity to focus on some other guys. So we've worked uh, – Day-Day Bishop back there. Uh, we worked uh, Rocket Sanders back there, Raheem. Um, we have uh, Slusher back there that's done a nice job for us. Uh, and then we have some, you know, Oglesby back there. So it's a big group back there. Uh, TJ Hammond's in that mix a little bit. But, you know, that we started – we really focused on KR really late last week. So we didn't start out early on doing that. So I got to really get that cut down. And but I think we got some good candidates, and uh, man, they've worked hard at it this summer, you know, on their own catching balls and stuff. So I'm really pleased because they got some guys about it really want to be back there, and that, that's a big part of it. Is it better for Damian maybe not to do that coming off the knee? Yeah, well, you know, Damian, the thing I've been proud proud of with him is he just wants to do what we need him to do, you know. But that's kind of the thought for me is you know I want to have him ready, but let's you know might get some other guys ready. It's good to have an experienced guy back there. Coach, how difficult is it to sort through return men when, I mean, I can't imagine you guys go live very often in that. How right. difficult is that? Right. So, you know, most places I've been, the head coaches are kind of against that. And 
particularly with kickoff return because it's such a big collision. So we, we try to make it as real as we can with full speed action and tagging off. And that's really what you can do. Now we may, we may come out the next scrimmage, particularly with our punt returners and do a tackle with it, you know, and typically if you tackle, you might, might get three reps for that, but you just don't get a lot of opportunities with that. But we try to do things that make the kids feel like there's pressure around them. So, you know, when you're catching a punt, you have people whacking at them with bags. Uh, we have a lot of drills where uh, some competitive drills that we do to try to have some battles going on with uh, four on four and, and have guys in their face and stuff and, and really focus on fielding the football, but really knowing what they'll do after they catch it. I mean, you just got to try to get a feel in these live scrimmages without tackling and, and hope you're right on it, you know. According to Coach Pittman the other day, it sounded like Sam Lloyd maybe had a little bit of an advantage at punter, but I think he maybe got banged up a little bit. Where's, yeah. where's that position battle going right now? Yeah, you know, really coming into camp, it was Sam and uh, Reed Bauer. You know, Reed is our returning starter from last year, and Sam, but Sam had a really good spring, and I, I kind of left spring feel like Sam well, – I left spring feel like Sam was in the lead. You know, so we competed in the summer and are competing this fall, and – um, Sam's going to be fine. He'll be back with us shortly, but they're, they're competing and that's a real battle. The Foley kid, we brought him from Nebraska has surprised me and, and done, done well for us as well. <clears throat> the thing that he brings with him, he's a Midwest kid, right? So he is kicked in wind a lot. And, and here I find out, you know, you have wind here at times and he's, he's not bad when he's kicking into the wind, which is, is a tough trait for any kid. I guess not just Arkansas, but even nationally. How much did the COVID kind of affect the, the weekly disruption of special teams play overall? And does it make you all more prepared in case this Delta variant, you know, yeah. crops up this fall? I mean, I think we're more prepared with any kind of protocol they come come to. But last year, it was kind of my world. You know, we're getting tested on Sunday, I believe, Tuesday and Thursday. So you know, I, I might, I might find out on Monday, I lose a guy. I might find out on Wednesday, I lose a guy, but I mean, you, you can imagine preparing all week and then Friday, they come in and tell us six guys are out. So like last year, uh, I believe it was an Auburn game. We, we lost about eight guys and it was really tough. So we won that game and I have a third team, probably 14 guy that I've worked some at third team that's starting in the game. And th those things are tough, you know, but it's also tough for the defensive coordinator and the offensive coordinator. But for me, if they lose a guy to on defense or offense, well, that guy had on teams, I might have lost him on a team because he's got to now play more offense or defense. So a little more goes into it on my end. But the, the protocol of it and the testing and all that, I mean, and the Delta variant, you worry about it. And hopefully they'll get all that under control, you know. But <coughs> it's different, you know, from anything we've ever done before. Uh, Roy was the holder with Cam and Jordan in the or spring and summer, but if Roy's dinged up his bow, you like who's your who's your number one holder yeah. right now? So what's going on there? Re Read by real quick, quick, quick story. We call I call him Dark Horse Bauer. I don't know why his name. I, I just come up with it. So a year ago, Reed Bauer never really held kicks ever, and I said, man, we got to get you holding. Man, you a punter. You got to learn to do that trade. And now, I mean, he's gotten really good at it. I mean, even uh, today in practice, Pittman kind of gives them a big field goal at the end and puts pressure on everybody and had a young snapper in there that had a kind of bad snap. Bauer reaches it, gets it down, and make, make the kick. And um, but So, Reed's done a really good job. That's helped us. Sam has held it, and he's held quite a bit in his career, but never in a game. That makes sense. So, I think we have two really good holders. We're also going to work some quarterbacks at holders that we're, we're working with those guys a little bit. Cause we just want to have a, a mix there according to your travel roster. Which, which quarterbacks? Um, Renfro's holding a little bit. Jones is holding a little bit. And we're kind of looking at some of the other guys, but those, those two are a little bit better than the other three. And then we just had a bad snap. I can't remember one. How good is it to have a guy like that who's been so consistent for, for so long? Yeah, Jordan, we call him Mr. Positive, you know, so you can, you can ask Jordan a question and he's always going to give you the right positive answer. And I think that's probably carried over a lot for him in his career. You know, I think he's a kid that, man, he works so hard and he's a kid that boy can blossom up and put on a lot of weight or he can cut his weight down. But at the end of the day, Jordan is always wants to do what's best for Arkansas, you know, and 
But as a sniper, that's the thing I've told him, you know, we got to continue to work on his coverage ability, which is always part of it with, with a long sniper, but the speed of snaps. But, the, man, the thing he brings is just great accuracy, and ho hopefully he'll continue to do that. From a recruiting standpoint, some coaches have different philosophies on offering specialists out of high school and stuff, but you, you guys have offered a few and brought some in. Cam's an yeah. example of one. Uh, just talk about your philosophy a little bit there and, and, and why you take that approach. Yeah, you know, when I got here, we had one, I think one kid on scholarship, Jordan Silver at the time. And I, I've been in, you know, at Auburn, we had four. At Georgia, we had three. So when we got here, you know, uh, we wanted to, with COVID coming on, we said we got to get a, some kind of a fix here for our tank. We really didn't have a kicker coming back. The, the kid, I can't remember his name, but he graduated. That was here previously. And, and, and Matthew Fields didn't know a lot about him. And there was another kid here that, left and went to South Florida really before I even met him. So, you know, we, we reached out and A.J. Reed, he kind of had an up and down career, but at, on the tail end, he'd gotten better. So we decided to go with him at that time and scholarship him, right? And then at Punter was kind of the same thing, couldn't go out and evaluate anybody. And we, we brought George Carrington into the program. So <clears throat> Coach Pittman was trying to do it right, but it was really tough. You just, you can see film, but you don't know what it, what's getting cut out and what's not or whatever. So but those guys, they were good for our program. And so now, you know, we have Cam in here. And, and Cam, what, what you want to do with that scholarship, guys, you want to go out and get the best guy in the country. You don't want to go out. Because what you'll find out in the kicking and punting world is this. If you're a one or two, I mean, you're really good. And, 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 and I, you know, there's all kind of rankings and all that. But I, I, I won't divulge my information, but we're – well, I go to look, that one and two is an elite guy. And then after that, there's a lot of good players. And if you don't use that scholarship, a lot of times you're going to get really good players that may develop into great players. Rodrigo Blankenship was a good player that developed into a great player. So that's why I think that scholarship is so important, you know. But in a lot of cases where I've been as well, there may be a kid that comes in and he develops and you ain't got to go out and get a guy because you've got him right there in front of you. So we're trying – with Coach Pittman, we're trying to have a punter, a kicker, and a long snapper on scholarship and have the best players we can behind them. And for me, when they get here, it's never about who's on scholarship. It's about who the best guy is. But, but having that scholarship does give you an opportunity to go out and try to get some, some good, really good players. Hey, um, Sam told us last week that um, Cam made a, I think, 57-yard pressure kick. It would have, would have been good from 65. So you mentioned today there was a pressure kick. You know, who's the kicker, the length, and all that? You said it was good, right? It was good. But uh, it, it was good. The, the, that particular kick, well, it was Cam a little at the time in, in that situation. But um, and, and when Pittman gets ready to call a, what we call a tour tour last second or, or put it down so and kick it, it's whoever's up in the order at the time. He doesn't really know. He just make, He's just going to say, hey, let's make the field goal. And it just happened to be – Cam was up first that day. Cam was actually up last today in the rotation, but that's when it occurred. So that's kind of that rose. And what we're going to try to do here in a week to 10 days is kind of settle in on who the guy is. Matthew Phillips is obviously competing well and doing a good job. Uh, Vito Cavaruso is a, a kid that's from uh, Missouri that's, you know, it, it was a kickoff guy last year, I think 70% on the year, which is pretty good. And his, his field goal skills are starting to get better, which I'm, I'm really liking where he's headed. But, uh, you know, we brought him here to kick off, but we knew he had the skills to kick field goals, and, uh, and I like where he's headed right now. Yeah, and I did want to ask you about Vito. So 70% touchbacks, mm -hmm. you know, where can he be better this year? Yeah, we can be better as if, he, if he could continue to grow as a field goal kicker because what he does have is a really big leg. And <clears throat> in the kickoff world, I want him to continue to develop, to be consistent and be able to do other things with, if you want to sky with him or kick across the field or whatever, you want to have that ability with the kid. And that, you know, Daniel Carlson, we had at Auburn, man, he was a deep left guy. And then the next year he's deep left with the sky. And the next year he's deep left, sky right, sky left. So you want them to, to, to continue to build those tools. And as they do, we'll better do more things with them. That's what I hope to see out of him. Okay. And the pressure kick today, you said it wasn't Jordan snapping. So was this your second? Who's your snapper? Second snapper. Uh, the sna snapper today. I, I, I tell you, be honest, with you, I'm just not sure. I hate to tell you, I don't know. But, but, but who's our second snapper? Uh, John Orline and uh, Francisco Castro are battling that out right now. Yeah. 
So you always hear about players putting on weight over the summer. I, I, I normally do not think about kickers, but I remember talking to Cam. He said he put on 18 pounds, and it really helped his leg strength. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, can you tell a big difference between him now and from, from the spring? Yeah, a quick story on Cam. I'm at his high school, and he was the last in-person kicker I was able to see, you know, at least watch from a distance or whatnot. And he comes out of the weight room that morning, and he his arms are about that big around. I, I walked out. I'm turned off. I said, this, is, this guy ain't never lifted weight in his life. Well, that, they'd hired a new coach there. I think that was really good for him. I think when he got here, his bench max was probably 135 pounds, which is pretty bad, right? So he's now – he's put on weight. He's a kid you want to see put on weight, and he's gotten stronger. And that's what he'll tell you is uh, the body weight I put on and strength has really made me a stronger kicker. And do you know how long the one he? You said he hit a long one today. Do you today know? wasn't a long one as much as it was just pressure. Pittman made the whole team get out there and get around him. Does that make sense? So, but I don't. I mean, it was it wasn't a chip shot, but it wasn't like a fifty something yard. It was probably in the thirty five range. Yeah. And is the the punter is that a pretty even deal right now? It really is. I mean, the, the punting job they're going to buy a lot, and probably at some point next week, mid to late week, we'll kind of decide on who that guy's going to be. That's really been a good battle um, this this spring, this summer, and, and, and of course, right now in camp. I know you don't tackle and uh, practice much. I wouldn't think on special teams, but how do you feel about your coverage teams? And yeah, you know, would you, you put know, more starters on there? Or just how do you feel about that? Yeah, I mean, we, we are certainly doing that, and Pittman's letting us use those guys. And, you know, last year, I, you know, our coverage units, what helped us in kickoff was we had video could kick it out some. Right, so 70%, seven out of 10, you ain't got to cover, right, technically. And the punt word is not, not the case. And I just feel like last year we were doing a lot of developing with guys, and you had this COVID issue going on. But, you know, our kids, man, they work so hard. I'm real pleased where we're at on our coverage units. And we are. We're putting our best players. I mean, we're not keeping anybody off of our coverage units, you know. And so, I mean, I, I think you're going to see a better coverage unit out there this year. And I think kids have a better, little, little bit better concept of what we're trying to do. You say the same as doing Tora, Tora, Tora. Is that, is that what you said? Tora, 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 like. That's just a word people like use. Like Pearl Harbor or whatever. <laughs> so, I guess that's maybe yeah. where it came from. So, a lot of people use that to call a unit on the field real fast. Kind of the last play of the game on offense. They got names for that. That's the name he uses for last, last second field goal. Okay. Okay. Thank